I don't have as much time to practice martial arts these days, but when I do, it definitely takes me back. If we can understand what's happening in the brain when these memories are recalled or formed, then potentially we can develop therapies for patients who have memory disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. My name is Dr. Nanthia Suthana. I'm a neuroscientist at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, and this is how I work. I study learning and memory, trying to understand human behavior using virtual reality memory experiments. Okay, looks good. There's a very famous patient, his initials are HM. He suffered from epilepsy from the age of nine and underwent a surgery to remove a part of his brain known as the medial temporal lobe. This part of the brain is crucial, now we know, for forming memories for everyday events. When you remove those parts of the brain, then this patient can no longer form new memories. I read about patient HM when I was 19, and ever since then I knew that I wanted to pursue neuroscience and essentially become a scientist to try to understand how the brain works and specifically how memories are formed in the brain. What is a memory? Uh, you know, as a neuroscientist, that's a very hard question to answer. When you're forming a memory for a new event, you're taking it all in. All that information comes in to a deep part of the brain called the hippocampus. And that's where we think those memories for events are formed. Our study is trying to understand what happens in the brain when you form new memories. And we're able to do that with a new opportunity afforded by a brain implant that was developed to monitor and treat seizures. Nanthi Sipana, nice to meet you. See you again, actually. So thanks for coming. So this is essentially a follow-up to that study. And the difference essentially is that we're gonna use virtual reality to test your memory. Patients who have this implant are able to come to the lab and participate in virtual reality experiments where they can do a memory task in VR to make it immersive and real world. And we can record the brain signals and try to understand what's happening in the brain. The idea of combining patients with brain implants and virtual reality memory tasks has never been done before. Just walk naturally through the room. Okay. At a certain point, you will see a yellow circle that encloses you. When that happens, we want you to just stop and try to remember that location. So. We put a virtual reality headset on them. We have them go through the task, learn various locations, try to recall those locations, test their memory. We can wirelessly take the data off and analyze it. We look for particular types of what we call brain oscillations that for many years scientists have hypothesized are very, very important for successfully learning a new environment and for navigating space. But this is really the first time it's ever been tested in humans. This is in enterrhinal one and two. Yes. Enterrhinal three and four, so this is the most medial. Okay, and we have some theta oscillations right there. So here is a recording from the hippocampus, which is the memory center. And you can see it just oscillates. The next question is really to understand how they are related to memory. We use virtual reality for that. So the goal essentially is to quantify how these 8 hertz theta oscillations relate to successful memory when you remember something well in a virtual environment versus when you forget. Alright, that's done. Curiosity is what drives me. I'm interested in creating novel ways to answer questions that we don't know the answer to. One of the things I love about science is that there isn't really an ending. There are always additional questions that you can ask. It's an exciting field to be in. It's definitely not boring. 